Good morning, everybody. Welcome to your final lecture of the semester. So today is going to be a bit different. So you are not going to see me today. Um, you will just hear my voice and I will uh, write on the paper right here, as you can see. So I think that's going to be a little bit easier uh, to go through the catalytic cycles that we are going to explore today. So I selected two cycles for us to analyze together. So the first one is the Monsanto acetic acid process. And the second one is going to be uh, hydrogenation of alkenes. Okay. So catalysis is a uh, field that if you want to make a lot of money, you go uh, to the catalysis field. Uh, and as I'm going to show you, I will going to show you, I will show you, uh, most of the catalysts, they are not super complicated uh, compounds and they work uh, pretty well. And all of them have some common characteristics that we are also going to explore, okay? So before we start, as this is our last lecture, I would like to thank you for your patience during, during this semester. So things didn't go the way we were planning, uh, but we had to figure out on the fly. So it was tough for everybody, but here we are uh, in the last lecture, okay? So next week, the final is on Wednesday. So I'm going to post the final exam Wednesday morning, probably between 9 and 10. And then you will have till uh, next day at 12 p.m. to turn it back to me, okay? Submission through the canvas. Okay, so let's start with the uh, first cycle. <clears throat> and to start, I picked the Monsanto acetic acid process. So this is the uh, reaction, okay? So we start with methanol and carbon monoxide in the presence of this rhodium catalyst NHI, we are able to obtain uh, acetic acid. So the reaction is super simple, but the mechanism that this reaction happens is a little more complicated, okay? So we know that the, catal the catalyst decreases the activation energy, and that's because there is interaction between the catalyst and the reagents that lower the energy of the chemical bonds or make uh, some interactions possible to happen that wouldn't be possible without the catalyst, okay? So usually the catalysts are Transition metals with very low coordination number, usually four. They have low coordination number because with low co coordination number, there can be oxidative addition and then start starts the catalyt catalytic cycle, okay? So let's start here with the catalyst. Before any reaction with the catalyst, there is a pre-reaction between methanol and HI. So what's going to happen here is a uh, substitution of the hydroxyl group by iodide. So we are going to produce, of course, water plus CH3 Okay, so the moment we produced CH3I is like this group here is activated. Now we have a halide here, which is reactive and reactions 
can happen, okay? Moving back to the catalyst here. The first thing I would like to do is to calculate the oxidation state of rhodium in this complex. Global charge is minus one. Carbonyl ligand is zero. So here is zero. Iodide ligand is one minus. So here is one minus as well. Therefore, the oxidation state of rhodium has to be one plus, okay? One minus with one minus is two minus plus one plus net charge one minus, okay? So that's the initial oxidation state for rhodium. So now rhodium is going to interact with CH3I. So every time we have RH, HH, oops, HH, RX with X being a um, halide, it's possible to do oxidative addition. And that's what's going to happen here, okay? So first step of the cycle is the oxidative addition of CH3I. So how is this oxidative addition going to proceed? Always the bond between the R group and the A light group is going to be broken and we are going to add CH3 and iodine on opposite sides of the complex. So we still have rhodium at the center. CO here, CO here. We have the two iodide ligands and now we added CH3 and another iodide in the opposite direction, okay? The opposite side of the CH3 and the net charge here is still one minus. So now let's calculate again the oxidation state of rhodium. Carbonyl is zero, zero. Iodide minus one, minus one, minus one. And CH3, as we talked about that uh, in previous lectures, this is one minus as well. 1 minus, 1 minus, 1 minus, and 1 minus. There is a total of 4 minus. Therefore, the charge, the oxidation state of the rhodium to give a net charge of 1 minus has to be 3 plus, okay? Therefore, this first step, in this first step, we changed the oxidation state from 1 plus to 3 plus and the coordination number from 4 to 6. Therefore, this is a oxidative oops, addition reaction, okay? Change in the oxidation state and change in the coordination number. Okay, so let's move on to the uh, next step. Now let's move on over here. Okay, so now we have a alkyl group that has a CO neighbor. Every time we have a CH3 or an alkyl group, or hydride group neighbor to a CO, we can have alkyl migration. So I'm going to draw here in steps 
how the AUQ migration will proceed. CO, iodine, iodine, and okay. So this electron pair will come over here. So this CH3 group is going to interact with that carbon. So here we have an elongated carbon-hydrogen bond and still the interaction between hydrogen and metal. So that's called agostic hydrogen. Eventually this bond is going to be broken and this is going to be transferred completely to the carbon. So we are going to end up with rhodium. CO, CH3, CO there, and three iodide ligands, and this is still one minus, okay? So now look at the complex. There was decrease in the coordination number and migration of the alkyl group to the carbonyl group, okay? So therefore, the second step here is called alkyl migration. And again, every time you have an alkyl group or a hydrogen group here, it's possible to migrate to the neighbor, okay? So now that the migration occurred, we have here an vacant site and next step in the cycle is the reaction with CO2 sorry with carbon monoxide so the carbon monoxide will coordinate to the vacant site that we just produced so we have here CO have here CO, CH3, CO, and three iodide ligands. And here, one minus again. Okay, so again here, I would like to calculate the oxidation state of the metal. CO is zero, iodide is one minus, and this whole group here is also one minus. Therefore, the oxidation state of rhodium in this compound is still three plus. Okay, so now we are basically at the last step. So now the last step, we have to decrease the coordination number because you want to recycle the catalyst, okay? To decrease the coordination number and also go from 3 plus to 1 plus, there is just one way, and that's by reductive elimination. Okay, who is going to be eliminated here? We are going to eliminate this compound and one of the iodide ligands. This way, we will have rhodium with two CO ligands and two iodide ligands that regenerates the catalyst. So what comes out from this reaction is CH3, C double O, now bonded also with iodide. And that's a reductive elimination okay so that's the product now the catalyst was regenerated and it's ready to go and start another cycle so remember always in a catalytic cycle the catalyst has to be regenerated so it will go through all the motions, last step 
usually is a reductive elimination to decrease the coordination number and also decrease the oxi oxidation state, regenerating the catalyst. And this is our product. So this is uh, acyl iodide. So that's a pretty reactive compound. So that's going to react with water. And that's going to produce acetic acid plus HI, okay? So HI can go again, react with ethanol and start the catalytic cycle as well, okay? So that's how the process to produce acetic acid works. So it's not a complicated cycle. A catalyst is not a complicated compound. But guys, this is very effective and that gives Monsanto a huge, huge profit, okay? So always start with a low coordination number compound. Oxidative addition is usually the first step. Go through the motions. Last step is probably reductive elimination because you need to decrease the coordination number and also the oxidation state. And you have to regenerate the catalyst right over here. So we have an acyl iodide as the product that promptly reacts with water, forming acetic acid and HI that will go again in the first step. Okay. <coughs> Okay, the second cycle of the day, and the last one, is the classic hydrogenation of alkenes that you see in organic chemistry. So, back there in the organic chemistry, you were told that you can get an alkene, react with hydrogen in the presence of usually palladium. Here is a rhodium catalyst, it's basically the same thing, and magically you have an alkane here, or just uh, saturated bonds. So we moved from unsaturated to a saturated compound, okay? So addition of hydrogen is a process that requires a lot of energy, so it wouldn't be possible to make this reaction without the catalyst. Okay, so how is the catalyst going to help this reaction? So probably the metal will interact with the reagents, breaking some bonds and make possible some interactions that were never possible without the catalyst. Okay, so this cycle is a little more complicated, but let's start the same way we did with the first one, okay? First thing I would like to do is to calculate the oxidation state, so net charge for this complex over here is zero, triphenylphosphine is zero, and chloride ligand or chloral ligand is one minus therefore then the oxidation state of rhodium is one plus okay so see here we have coordination compound with low coordination number and low oxidation state so that's a compound that's suitable to undergo 
oxidative addition. The first step is reaction with hydrogen, hydrogen. That's going to be the first step here. Okay. Reaction between the metal complex and H2 gas. So again, we have, if we have Rx, H, H, we always can do oxidative addition. And that's going to break this bond here and insert the fragments up and down in the structure. So break this bond, add one hydrogen on the top as a hydride and another one at the bottom. So now rhodium, hydride and hydride that came from hydrogen gas. We still have here triphenylphosphine, chloro, and triphenylphosphine on the other side as well. And the oxidation state here is still zero. So now let's do the same thing here for the rhodium. Let's determine the oxidation state. Triphenylphosphine is zero. Chloro is one minus. Hydrogen, when it's coordinated, is hydride, therefore one minus. So we have one, two, three negative charges, therefore the charge for the rhodium has to be three plus to give a net charge of zero to the complex, okay? <clears throat> All right, so now this reaction, sorry, now the next step is that the complex will lose one of the triphenylphosphine ligands. So that's going to give a five coordinate compound. Let's draw like that, HH, chloro, and the triphenylphosphines here, okay? So, lost of one of the triphenylphosphine ligands. So, that creates here a vacant site. So, something can coordinate there. So next step then is reaction with the alkene. So the alkene is going to be inserted in the coordination sphere. So that happens because of the interaction between the metal and the double bond. right here so we still have chloro here hydrogen actually hydride hydride and the two triphenylphosphines here okay and the charge here is still uh, zero <coughs> so once we have the double bond interacting with the metal. There will be interaction between the carbon and the hydrogen here. So I'm just going to draw here the uh, what the intermediate would look like. So rhodium, hydrogen, chloro here. We have this hydride that's going to interact here with this carbon and then 
this carbon is going to bond to the metal. Put H2C. Now we have CHCH, interaction between carbon and hydrogen, and also between hydrogen and metal. Still here the two triphenylphosphine ligands as well. So this double bond came over here. So again here we have a hydrogen that interacts with carbon and rhodium at the same time. So that's called gostic hydrogen. This carbon-hydrogen bond is a little bit elongated. Eventually, this bond here will break and this hydrogen is going to be bonded exclusively to the uh, carbon over there. So that's going to form something like that. Now it's CH3, here CH2. So we have chloro here again, hydrogen on top, and the two uh, triphenylphosphines. Oxidation state is still zero. <clears throat> now, what we generated here is again a vacant site. So that allows a coordination of an extra ligand. Remember that triphenylphosphine that was lost in the beginning? So guess what? Now it's going to come back because now we have a vacant site. So that's going to produce this kind of complex here. So we have CH2, CH3, and hydrogen on the top. Net charge is still zero. So now what I would like to do, again, is to calculate the oxidation state of rhodium. Triphenylphosphine is zero. So we have one, two, three zeros. Chloroligand, one minus. Hydride, one minus and CH2CH3 is always one minus as well. Therefore, the oxidation state of rhodium is three plus. Guys, last step here now. So we have to do something here to first decrease the oxidation state of rhodium and also decrease the coordination number from 6 to 4. And third, regenerate the catalyst. What is the only way to decrease oxidation state and decrease coordination number? There is only way to do that, and this is reductive elimination. So what are we going to eliminate? Whatever we need to get back to the initial catalyst. So the only thing that can be eliminated here is CH2CH3 and hydrogen. So that will regenerate the catalyst back and as the product, now we have CH2 bonded with hydrogen. So every time you eliminate is this atom bonded with this atom. So CH2 bonded with hydrogen and CH3. So that's the same thing as H3C. CH3. 
So that's our product. And that regenerates the catalyst and it's ready again to go to oxidative addition, go through all the cycle and then last step is the reductive elimination. Okay, so that's the only way to add hydrogens to the double bond, okay? So see here that the interaction between metal and the reagents is essential because that's the interaction that's going to break HH bonds, which are very strong, also get close together hydrogen and carbon for the transfer of hydrogen and then saturation of the compound here. And again, last step is the one that makes possible the uh, formation of carbon-hydrogen bonds and we get the product. Remember, catalyst needs to be regenerated and go again, goes again uh, to the cycle, okay? So this is a little more complex cycle, but the basics are the same. Oxidative addition, in this case here, there is coordination of the alkene. So every time you coordinate alkene, First interaction is between the double bond and the metal. Then the uh, electron density is going to move. So this carbon is the one going to be bonded and there will be the capture of, uh, in this case, the hydride that's uh, next to uh, the uh, alkene site, okay? So this is what it will look like, the intermediate, and then last step here. <clears throat> okay, so I think I will stop at this point for our last lecture. So I hope you understood it. If not, let me know. We can always uh, talk during office hours. If the office hours do not work for you, we can schedule an appointment and I will be happy to answer all your questions. For those of you that are going to graduate, congratulations. So this that was the first step in, in your career. So now you have a degree in chemistry or biochemistry and uh, be wise. You have all the knowledge that you need to survive and, and uh, be successful in your career. And even those of you that are going to graduate, of course, you are not my students anymore, but you know how to reach me. If you have any questions, send me an email and I will be happy to talk with you or give you some advice uh, if I can. Okay, so enjoy your summer and I see you in the future. Bye-bye.